both found in Judges, chapter 6, verses 11 through 16. Judges, chapter 6, starting in verse 11. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Joash, the Abizrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. But sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us out up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hands of the Midianite, Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? But Lord, Gideon asked, How can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites together. In our second passage, you just flip over to chapter 7 of Judges. Chapter 7, starting in verse 7 to 22. <clears throat> the Lord said to Gideon, With the three hundred men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the other men go, each to his own place. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites to their tents and kept the three hundred, who took over the provisions and trumpets of the others. Now the camp of Midian lay below him in the valley. During that night, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up, go down against the camp, because I am going to give it into your hands. If you are afraid to attack... Go down to the camp with your servant, Purah, and listen to what they are saying. Afterward, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So he and Purah, his servant, went down to the outposts of the camp. The Midianites, the Amalekites, and all the other eastern people had settled in the valley, thick as locusts. Their camels could no more be counted than the sand on the seashore. Gideon arrived just as a man was telling a friend his dream. I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend responded, This can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and his whole camp into his hands. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he worshipped God. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up! The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Dividing the 300 men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all of them, with torches inside. Watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp blow yours and shout, For the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and the... Gideon and the... Excuse me, Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just after they had changed the guard. They blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow. And they shouted, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran, crying out as they fled. When the three hundred trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. The army fled to Beth Shitha toward Zerara, as far as the border of Abel, Meholah, near Tabith. And that's our scripture readings for this morning. And young children, is there children's church? Okay, this is a time to be dismissed. Good morning. Let's start with prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you freely, to come and hear your word. And Father, we thank you for the Gideons and their work in this country, and Father, and their work in the distribution of the word of God, not only here, but all over the world. We thank you for that. Bless the reading of the scriptures today, Father, that we have. Have us take them to heart, and may your words just be spoken to us, and have us not to just hear those words, but to apply them to our lives, Father, to be like Gideon, 
to make a difference, to stand, and to make a difference in this world. And we just thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to be a part of that glorious plan. We pray these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So Gideon, it wasn't too hard to think of what am we going to preach about today. Because we have a guest speaker, Gary, from the Gideons. And we're going to get to hear all about them. And I'm not going to mention much about them because that's his job today. But what I am going to tell you is where they get their name from. They do get their name from Gideon in the Bible. And we're introduced to him, about him in Judges 6. And then in Judges 8, he's no longer. He dies and everything. But he made such an impact that we hear about him again in Hebrews when he is listed as one of the great people of faith. So he made that list, that honor roll. In Hebrews 11.1 1, it said, Now faith... Sorry about that, Kim. I just jumped on you. <laughs> now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And I told you last time that the definition out of the dictionary for faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. The thing that we battle with is where is our faith? Do we put it in the world? Do we put it in ourselves? Do we put it in things? Do we put it in prestige? Do we put it in health? Or do we put it in God? And that's what the story of Gideon is all about. Gideon was not some big faith warrior, as we see. He's introduced in Judges chapter 6, and in verse 12 it says, When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said... The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. That's the first that we hear about him. And the angel of the Lord called him a mighty warrior. If you keep reading, I don't see that Gideon was a mighty warrior. I don't see that at all. I see someone that questioned, that lacked faith, that was scared. But yet, God sees men differently. He sees our heart. He picked David, the weakest of all the brothers, to fight Goliath when no one else would stand up. Sometimes we think that physical size, weakness, ability is a detriment to serving God. But yet it's not, not at all. Because He can use the weakest because it's His power that shines through us. Matter of fact, if you're great and strong and mighty in your own abilities, you'll just learn that so many times that gets in the way. Because we have to lay down our own pride, our own abilities, and let God shine through us. If we rely on our own abilities we're going to mess things up. We need to be completely broken. We need to be completely humble and rely on God's power to do mighty works through us. <clears throat> Gideon answered back with, But, sir, and but is a complete reversal of what was just said. But, sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And so many times we take that and say, Well, if the Lord is not blessing us, if we don't have this and that in our lives, is He not with us? Does He not love me? Is God not real? And we question His existence. We think, why do I not have all these things? I trusted in you, God. I became a Christian. Why is my life not just a bed of roses now? Well, that's not what the Bible promises at all. In fact, it promises trials and tribulations for those that love Him. And what a blessing that could be to be persecuted for His name, for His righteousness, for His glory. We get to take part. It's not a chore we get to be privileged to take part in His glorious plan, to be considered heirs because He loved us enough to do everything, to die for us. And if you keep reading on, He questions, but then the, the angel says, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hands. So many times we think we need to prepare first. And we do need to study. We do need to pray and everything. But it's God's power working through us again. He didn't train up Gideon first. He didn't go take him through an extensive training. Watch any movie today where men are called into action to fight battle, literal battle. They train and everything else and spend all this time training. Watch a Rocky film. Half the whole movie is he's training for that big fight. But he says here, go in the strength you have. Why is that significant? Because God is the strength. He can use us in all of our weaknesses to fulfill His glorious ways, His might, His, His standards, His goals, His story, history as we call it. He says, am I not sending you? That's enough said. If God is with you, who can be against you? But, Lord, He says it again, but, I understand all this, but I just don't see how. How can I save Israel? Well, He can't, can He? 
My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites together. We just have to answer the call. And in Mark 16, verses 15 and 16, the call is, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. We know the Great Commission. We know the words in Matthew. We are called to be disciples to the world, starting in our own community and then reaching out and then reaching out to the other other ends of the world. And the Gideons take that very seriously and they're doing a great job of it. And they don't waste the money or their efforts. They distribute the Word of God. And they know that that seed is found in that Word of God. That there's power in the Word. And they're just obedient men and women who are doing that. It's not a suggestion. It's go. Just like he told Gideon here. We don't need to say, but how is it going to happen? But I'm too weak. But I'm not capable. I don't have the mites. All we need to know is that God is with us. That that's His plan. And He will carry out His plan. We can either be a a part of it on our own accord or He can do it in another way. But wow, the blessings that we can have in mind if we don't question Him. Skipping on to Judges chapter 7, we'll start in verse 9. During that night, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up, go down against the camp, because I am going to give it into your hands. Enough said. If this had been Caleb, Caleb would have been, Let's go right now. Because he wholeheartedly served God. But Gideon was like, "Um, hmm, let me think. And then God says, if you're afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura and listen to what they're saying. So what did Gideon do? He went down to the camp because he was afraid. And don't be ashamed to be afraid. We're going to be afraid in this world. But guess what? We've got the comforter with us, the counselor. God gave us His Spirit to live inside of us, to equip us, to empower us, everything that we need. We can have peace through Him to face any situation. And this world has tough situations in it. And that's our fault. We tarnish God's beautiful, perfect creation when we chose to rebel and sin. But yet God loves us enough that He pursues us and that when we become saved, He gives us the power of His Spirit to live inside of us. God lives in us and through us. So he went down to the camp and he heard the dream. And the dream and the interpretation was Midian was going to fall at the hands of Gideon, period. And at that point, verse 15, it says, When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he worshipped God. Why didn't he worship God to begin with? Why didn't he have the faith at the beginning? Just like with plant germination and seed growth, it starts. We see a little bit of life, and then it grows and grows. God doesn't expect us to be faith warriors just overnight. He expects us to spend time in His Word. He expects us to get on our knees and humble ourselves before Him. He expects us to grow in faith. And then when we grow into faith to maturity, then our seeds scatter to the ends of the earth. And this power is in the seed. The power's in the Word of God. He'll do it all. Gideon finally realized that. He fell down and worshipped God in verse 15. Then what did he do? He ran back. He was all inspired. And he said in verse 17, Watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. Now we've got a faith hero. We've got the guy that made the honor roll in Hebrews. It just had a, he had a, had a click. He had to see it. God was with him the whole time. God didn't change. God's plans didn't change. Gideon just finally realized what was important. He realized he needed to be obedient to God, and God was very patient with him. If you know the rest of the story, he said, make the fleece damp with the dew. Don't make the fleece damp with the, with the dew. Wow, either way, I'm getting the sign I need to go. Why did he need to do all that? Why didn't he just not have faith in the beginning to follow God? But when he had the faith, they did mighty things, and they did exactly what God promised in His Word. And His Word is full of promises if we will just be obedient. And He conquered the land. God doesn't need your strength. He doesn't need your might. He just needs your obedience through faith. It's as simple as that. And you don't get to hear me for a long time today. I've kind of to my point because I want to give Gary plenty of time to speak about the Gideons. 
I can't become a Gideon because I'm a pastor now. And that was made official Tuesday, if you don't know that, by the, by the um, River Conference. Thank you. But a lot of you guys can. I can still give and support the Gideons. And what a glorious thing they did. You know where the first place they placed a Bible was? Does anybody know? You know. Superior, Montana, right next door to us. Yeah. So imagine that. So I'm going to close in prayer and let you have the podium. Father, thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for passionately pursuing us when we we doubt you in our faith. Father, help us to be like Caleb, to just grasp that faith and grasp the promises that you've given us. And that, Father, those promises are for our children also, and for our future generations. But, Father, when we even doubt, let there be growth. Let us grow to serve you wholeheartedly. Let us have the faith. Let us be obedient, Father, so that we can partake in your plans, in history, your history, Father. That we may bring glory and honor to you. We just thank you so much. And we thank you for the Gideons and their work. We thank you for all of those here that serve you. And we just pray these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Have you ever smoked the Word of God? Yes, I said smoked. See, Brian did. Brian got through 470 pages of a little testament before he started reading that Jesus loved him and died for him. So thank you for allowing me to report to you what God is doing through the Gideon ministry. And it's what I said God is doing because we were called, we were equipped by God to do what he called us to do, and that's spread God's word around the world. Now back to Brian's story. Brian was given his little testament, like this, because it was small enough to slide under the cell door in the prison where he was waiting, sentencing for vigilante activities on the people who kidnapped and killed his daughter. He said he got plenty of tobacco in in prison, but he didn't get enough paper. When he got that little Gideon Testament, the pages were so nice and fine, they rolled really good cigarettes. And so, as I said, he made his cigarette, lit it, and watched the paper burn as he smoked it. One day he got reading the words on that, and then tried reading it faster than it burned. And then it hit him that God loved him. Jesus died for him to save his life. He never spoke to, spoke to Page 471, he still carries that testament with 105 pages in it every day in his life as he preaches also in Gold Hill, Oregon. Do you realize that half the people ever born on this earth are alive today? There are over 7 billion of us alive now. And out of that 7 billion, about 4 billion don't know our Lord Jesus Christ. How are we going to reach them? That's one of my challenges to you. Help us reach the lost. We need more workers. Last year's missionary arm of your church, 300 plus thousand Gideons and our wives distributed over 84,632,342 copies of God's Word. We did it in 197 countries, 99 different languages, Think about it. Two go out for every second or every time your heart beats. See, since 1908, we've distributed over 109 billion copies of God's words. By the end of next year, we will hit you know, two billion copies of God's word. But that's not enough. So you see, your support for the Gideon ministry helps us spread God's Word in places where you and I don't get to go yet. As professional, born-again, businessmen and Christians, members of our own evangelical churches, we have only one mission. That's to save men, women, boys and girls 
to the saving the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ through distribution of his word and personal witnessing. This year, with your help, we placed 888 copies of God's word at both the bound, in the Boundary and Bonner County fairs. As God said in Isaiah 55, 11, And so shall my word go forth out of my mouth, that it shall not return unto me void. So as I said, my challenge to you is support our mission. First, through your continued prayers. My brother Larry Williamson was stoned three years ago in Ethiopia, distributing God's word, the Testaments, in a middle school. The high school Muslim students got out, and they came out and started stoning them. Through God's intervention, no one was injured. They were hit with stones. They got a few bruises, but no one was seriously injured. And secondly, as I said earlier, we have four billion lost and dying people in the world. We need help distributing God's word, reaching them. So if you feel a call on it, God's touching your heart, that little tickle, you know, come talk to me or Bob Sable, my wife Dorothy. We'd be glad to take your information and talk to you about the beginning ministry. You know, as I said in Matthew 10, 37, 38, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he sent forth laborers into the harvest. So give you your time becoming part of this ministry. And last, yes, always, as always, we ask for your monetary support. But you see, in 1908, the Ministerial Association of the United States told the Gideons, you place the word, we'll furnish the funds. So we're, we call on the churches each year as best we can and tell them what their dollar is doing. Remember, 100% of every dollar you give goes through the printing and distribution of God's holy word around the world. Imagine, if you would, a hundred students standing around this ministry, the sanctuary with their hands out asking for their first reading book. You see, in some countries, that's the first reading book. only reading book the students get is a little testament. Who's going to give the first one? $1.35 will get the first one out. $135 will get one in the hands of each of those students. And $100 will buy 25 of these for motels. Or just, you know, check for $500, put 100 of them out, which gives us the possibility of reaching 23,500 people because that's what, how many people on the average will go through a motel, hotel room and read one of these test book. One of these. So when making out checks, please make them out to the Gideons, not to Gary McKelman. As much as I would like to have the money, but it, it's for God's word, not my use. And if you didn't come prepared to give today, that's quite all right. You have a bulletin, bulletin insert, something like this, and the Gideons take plastic. You can open it up, fill out your information, put it in the envelope, and we'd be glad to have it making Bibles Monday in Nashville. And if you're not prepared to give, you don't know how much God would have you give, take the envelope home. Ask God what he'd have you give. Put it in the envelope and mail it, and it'll be doing work around the world. Now, I have one last little story to tell you. About seven years ago now, on the last day of school, I was a teacher. I picked on eighth graders for a living. I had 40 eighth grade students in the classroom watching the clock, waiting for that last bell to ring, summer break. And in comes this classroom, comes this great big bushy bearded black haired guy, and he says, Mr. Mack, I want to return your Bible. He says, when I was kicked out of the eighth grade, the last thing I knew, I was going to, I knew I was being kicked out, so we wanted to do one last mean thing. So I stole the Bible off your desk. That night he got home. After his dad got through beating him, dad went off to the bar. Tanner went out to the barn with his dad's 357 Magnum and God's holy word. Tanner used the Bible, not the pistol. 
thank God, today, right now, Tanner has about 70 teenagers in front of him because he's a youth pastor in Portland, Oregon. He graduated Boise Bible College, is now a pastor. So if Brian could thank you, Tanner could thank you, they would say thank you for giving God's holy word. Also, another way you can continue to give, all year long you have in the back of your narthex there, Gideon uh, cards. Fill them out and bless somebody with a card. You know, and i got a short video. If he puts that in right now, you watch the video and you'll know a lot more about how to use Gideon cards uh, th- then I don't have to talk to you. So thank you, and God bless you. An ordinary greeting card says, Happy birthday. Thank you. Get well soon. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. But a Gideon card says so much more. In addition to creating a meaningful moment, you make it possible for lives to be changed forever through the sharing of God's Word. Giving through the Gideon Card Bible program is simple. Choose a card. Personalize and send it. Then, donate Bibles. You can also quickly complete the process online at gideons.org slash send the word. With this simple gesture, you play a vital role in placing the gospel into the hands of those who may otherwise never receive it. Your gift might purchase a copy of God's Word for someone on the streets of Brooklyn or in Buenos Aires, a local hospital, or a school deep in the heart of Nigeria. More than 85 million copies of Scripture are distributed each year in over 190 countries around the world. And each is distributed one by one by one. You may obtain cards in several convenient ways. From Gideons.org slash send the word or from the displays in your church or local funeral home. Already have a card? You can still participate by enclosing the simple Bible donation insert with your card. And I said, um... I don't know no Jesus, and there's no Jesus in this block. And uh, he, uh, at that time, proceeded to share with me the contents of the book in his hand. So I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and he gave me that little book and told me to take it with me, told me to put my name on the back of it if I believed it, and uh, he turned and walked away. Share the triple blessing of Gideon cards, a blessing for you as you provide God's Word for the recipient who receives your card. And for that someone you may never know who receives a copy of God's Word because of your simple act of kindness. Visit Gideons.org slash send the word today. I don't know where all the millions of scripture has gone, but I know where one scripture has gone. And it landed in my hands. And it was that scripture that began the journey for me toward a life of obedience to Christ. Send the word and change a life. That's way better than I can act. So, but for every card that goes out, two scriptures go out. One in the U.S., which is what we use at the fairs and prisons and such in the U.S., and one goes overseas somewhere. So, for that little $5, you get a card. Much better than the Hallmark ones. You know, if you care enough, send eternal word. And... Somebody around the world will receive God's word. But I thank you for listening so well. I'm really, you know, pleased to be back here. Great to see all of you again. And I was standing at the back in the sanctuary as you leave. And you may uh, drop into my Bible what you pre, uh, yeah, tongue tied, eye teeth, hiding the tongue, can't see. Okay. 
And I'll, I'll be glad to take your donations. So thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Gary. Gideon's is a great thing to give to. Like he said, and I'll stress this part, 100% of your donation goes to distributing God's Word. I don't know about you, but times I don't have a problem giving. I have a problem knowing how to give. Because so much of your giving, you don't know where it goes. You've got to be faithful when you give to give it and let God use it. But here is an organization where you can see what the money does. You don't have to worry about, if I'm giving money to build a well somewhere to Five dollars go to it if you donated a thousand dollars, or did a thousand dollars go to it? Are they spending the money efficiently? The men and women are self-supported, doing this work, and God uses the money directly to distribute the Bibles. Gideon doubted how to serve God, but then in faith he served God, and mighty things happened. He defeated an army. I challenge you to read the rest of the story. Three hundred men went out and fought a hundred and some odd thousand men. And one. Gideon lacked faith, but yet he realized and he grabbed a hold of that faith and lived mightily. And then Hebrews recognized him as being a mighty warrior of faith. We have a dying world out there that needs to have the gospel message of Jesus Christ reach to them. That is where the power is. Not from us. Yes, we can be examples, we can be hands and feet. But the word of God is what convicts and saves. And the Gideons get that word directly into the hands of people that need it. And I uh, commend them for that. So if you have a chance to give, give. If you don't have a chance today, take it home. Keep them in your prayers and in your thoughts. If you cannot give monetary, keep praying for it. They can use that just as much. So just remember that and thank you for coming and talking to us. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to give. We thank you for blessing us so much. You give us so much, dear Lord, and you pursue us passionately. And we just thank you for that. We thank you for the Gideons. We thank you for their heart to serve. And Father, let us be a church that supports them and a church that has a heart to reach others for Jesus Christ, that loves just as much as you love, that does not want one person to not be able to spend eternity in heaven does not want one person to not know their father forever and ever and we just thank you for the opportunity to be part of that glorious plan to share in the privilege of spreading the gospel message to those that need it father let us be the lights of this world let us not hide it hide that light but to break that vessel father to be broken and let our light shine uh, let your light shine through us and we just thank you and praise you of course in jesus name amen